Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to narrow down all of your features so that you could have an MVP. Grab that popcorn, let's dive in. A lot of us come up with these full featured apps. So let's take a look at that. The Chasm by Joffrey Moore published in 1992. A lot of us have a tendency to focus on a whole product solution when we're doing these boot camps and things because we wanna be seen as working on those complex products so people hire us. But that is the opposite strategy that really works. Those companies that we look at today in the mainstream, they're Goliath and we're David. So instead in the book Lean Startup by Eric Rice, he says you need to focus on the early adopters, not the mainstream. It takes 10 years to become an overnight success to cross the chasm. All right, so we're not there yet. You got to start with an MVP. Now here's the user story mapping exercise. It's from the book user story mapping. You start with your persona and the persona has an ambition, a job to be done, this evolution that they're going to go through from caterpillar to butterfly, this outcome. Here you have these three, these activities that they have to do in order to accomplish this. We have the backbone pink post-its that are the narrative that go across it. And then you finally have these yellow post-its, which are like the features that support that step. And then you draw your magic MVP line, which becomes a release slice. Not only do I draw a line horizontal like this, but I also draw one vertical. So let's get into that. Frank's story is a little bit something that we can all relate to. Frank is recently unemployed. He's nervous and anxious about an upcoming job interview. During the interview, he freezes and his mind goes blank. He forgets crucial details to his candidacy. To make matters worse, he has a training quiz that he must take to get certified or licensed. Uh-oh, he freezes again and forgets the answers to the questions. Frank feels exhausted, anxious, and like he's not cut out for this anymore. Ooh, you see how I'm leaving the, the cliffhanger here? This is called our backstory. Story. The next part is we take these needs and we exceed them. So it turns out to be things that are unimaginable, implausible, impossible. As Wallace Stevens says, poetry should resist intelligence almost. And here we're writing a story, a poetic journey. What is exceeding the need of a job? About to never work again. <gasps> what about to retire? <gasps> what about passive income? <gasps> A feeling of loved by a community, right? Instead of belonging, no need to prove oneself. Oh, interesting. Feeling of understood. And then, you know, instead of relaxed, how about motivated? Okay, so here you can see we did a little tiny persona here of Frank's story of this anxiety ridden moment in, in a human's life. So now that we have our persona here, we also have an agile, what's called uh, user stories. So here you can see like, as a user, I want this so that I benefit. The problem with this type of framing is it says want, and we want to put need, not want. And the acceptance criteria is this, given how they begin, when this action is taken, then outcome of taking action happens. We can get our user story and we can begin to do that. We can say, as Frank, because our persona's name's Frank, I need a job so that I can feel fulfillment given how I've been unemployed. When I apply, then we want to come over here to our how might we's and get an exceeding Frank's needs. Never work again. When I apply, then I never work again. Interesting. You can see how we start to frame these user stories and then they've titled them, prioritize them and estimate how much time they'll take. That's the user story part from Agile Manifesto. What we want to do now is move into user story mapping. And in user story mapping, we're going to essentially start with this story of Frank. I'm thinking I'm just going to write user stories without thinking of the product. And so Frank opens web browser, browses job listings. At some point in here, he's going to have to get the interview. He opens the browser, he browses job listings. Let's just say browses job listings. Perhaps he submits cover letter. You know, we'll just say submits profile, which includes cover, portfolio, 
etc. And then he gets notified of a job interview, feels nervous, joins the interview. There's probably some, you know, gaps in here, but we can, we can just keep going. And blanks afterwards, feels burnout. Here we have our linear user story. It's going from one to the next here. Just bada bing, bada boom. And I'm just connecting those. Great. So that's our backbone. The next step is the features underneath. And so for example, let's get another sticky note out and we're going to make this one yellow. And so if he's browsing job listings, as Frank, I need to see jobs that are available so that I can apply. Given how I've been nervous when I get an interview, then I am loved by community. Wow, that's cool. Get an interview then I feel belonging. Now that's relatively ambiguous, which allows other team members on our team to help us add things. We're working by ourselves here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to label this as another activity. So I'm gonna move it up one and this, it, I'll move over to the goal. So I'm gonna make it green. So now that's an epic and this is an activity. So let's come down in here and let's finally add some features. So we're gonna have a job listing and you know, job posting, all of that jazz. These are all features. And then we're gonna have to have a job form. And when I say we have to have, I mean like these are some of the features that support this. Resume template, cover letter template. It's notified of the job. So we're going to need some kind of email notification. You could do a push notification. All these ways to be notified. Now this is interesting. This is where he feels nervous. So what are some features that support that? How could he relax? So this actually brings up another activity here. Where we can say, as Frank, I need to relax so that I can remember details when I join the interview, then I need to feel belonging. Okay, so how do we go from nervous to a sense of belonging? This is where humdrum comes in. For example, listen to classical music. That's been shown to help reduce. So we could listen to classical music. We could also listen to music that is catered to those with anxiety. We saw that with spoke. And then we could also meditate and we could also actively play music like a piano. That has some scientific evidence behind it. Or what if they don't have a piano? They could actively whistle, hum, tap. Oh, interesting. And we could go on and on and on as we do this. Now in the traditional user story mapping, we'd fill all these out and we would draw our lines for MVP and then we would only do this first release. If that was the case, we'd end up doing a job platform. Not that that's bad, that's pretty cool. And Peter Levels, he's done remote okay and he's doing pretty good with that passive income strategy. So it's not like it's unfound. It's definitely a plausible thing. The issue is that's not the area that we're going to compete. That's sort of already thought of. So I'm looking for this avenue of solving a specific problem. And so I go ahead and I draw lines like this as well to say, hey, I'm only gonna do this piece. And that's how I select an MVP. And so this is where I move into this type of Moscow method, which means it's like a must have, should have, could have, won't have. And this is the, the priority method. Remember earlier it says, what's the priority of this? Is it a must have or a won't have is the simplest way. Think of that. Now, I think that Humdrum should have music listening. I'm like sort of a fan of that. I don't think it'll have meditation, although that might be a thing. So these two, I would move down. I think that we should have Frank actively hum or whistle. That's my two cents. I, I don't think we will uh, play piano. I do think that listening to spoke kind of curated list is better than just you know, kind of popular classical songs. And so that's how I would prioritize this. So for our MVP, that's all we have to do. Begin with a persona. We set a goal for that persona. We think of the backbone first, then we come up with activities based on that written in the template that is the user story. Then we start to think of features for each phase or stage of the story. Now that is user story mapping. Oh, look how messy that is. It's kind of like uh, Jackson Pollock. That concludes our video on how to narrow down and converge all our feature set into an MVP so we can design something feasibly that will wow the world. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you loved it, please subscribe. It keeps the channel alive. And if you want to be notified about more content like this, click the bell notification and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.